Okay, to stand alongside the tutorial I've recorded um, for the settings you need in Lightroom to ensure that you print accurately 100% as you see it on the screen every time, I thought it was actually a bit remiss of me not to do a tutorial on the stage before that, which is preparing the image for print. So this is the stage you need to do to get the image uh, ready to turn to Lightroom to print. So here's an image which I've worked up and I've done all the um, normal changes and so on and so forth and I'm now happy with this image. Um, and it's this is the flattened version, so all the layers have been flattened. Now, an important thing for me is to try and crop the image in a particular ratio. And let me show you what I mean. Up here, I've got this set up. And you, you can do this in yourself, you set up ratios. And I've got it to crop at a ratio of 1.454 to 1. Now I've already cropped this image and so it fits perfectly. Um, but if I was to want it to come in, you can see it's moving all the sides proportionately. And that would still be cropped at that ratio, i.e. this side is 1 and this side is 1.454. So it's like six by four or whatever. Now you might go, well, that's a bit of a weird ratio, David. Why use that ratio? Well, I happen to know that that ratio will print out an, a size of 384 by 264 millimeters perfectly. Why is that important? Well, that's important because that will then fit absolutely perfectly into a standard cut mount. The standard aperture in a standard mount, which you can buy, is 384 by, uh, sorry, is uh, 400 by 280. And so by printing it at 384 by 264, then it allows a nice 8mm border all the way around the edge. And I particularly like that. You might not. I do. So that ratio, if you were to divide 384 by 264, you would find that it would come to 1.454. So I always try, if possible, to crop my images to that ratio because then that makes everything really nice and easy. I'm not going to have to cut mounts, so on and so forth. But look, you clearly need to crop an image in the way that the image deserves to be cropped. But you'd be surprised to find, uh, when I first started doing this, I find that for the majority of images, it works just fine. Uh, and if it doesn't work, well, of course, I crop the image accordingly. Um, and usually then use them as uh, projected images and never print them because I can't, I don't really want to go to the faff of cutting mounts. I don't particularly enjoy cutting mounts. I know some people do. Um, but if you crop to that ratio, trust me, it will work perfectly. So the first thing is then we crop to that ratio. Right, now having cropped to that ratio, we need to sharpen this print, this image, to an amount which is perfect for the kind of distance we, and paper we're going to be viewing it on. So let me explain. First thing we need to do is set the size of the image. We would do that up here. If we go image, image size and if I bring this in it's gone to my other screen you can see at the moment it's 553 by 380 millimeters well for all the reasons I've told you I want mine to be 384 so if I go 384 then you can see magically 264 has come in because it's in proportion according to the ratio I told you 1.454 very important that you don't tick that box if you tick that box, it will reduce the resolution um, in proportion to um, the reduction in size. And you don't want that. You want to print at the maximum resolution possible. So it's 384 by 264, and we go OK. So that image now is that size, 384 by 264 millimeters. Right, how do we sharpen? Well, sharpening is a very specific activity that makes a massive difference to an image. You should only sharpen an image right at the end and you should sharpen an image according to how it's going to be viewed. So if you're going to view an image on a projector, then you want to find out the size in pixels that it's going to be projected at. 
might be 1600 by 1200 it used to be 1400 by 1050 pixels more common now 16 by 1200 pixels and then you sharpen to, to those proportions but we're not doing it for projected image we're doing it for print so it needs to be sharpened differently and I've tried a number of different methods for sharpening for print and the best one I've found is to use good old trusty Nick so if we go filter Nick collection and they've got an output sharpener if I click on that you'll see what's going to happen Nick's going to load up and it's coming on my other screen again so I'll bring it across and it's loaded up this Nick output sharpener screen and up here we can determine what the printer is so in my case it's inkjet what distance it's going to be viewed at because that's important because the further away that someone is the less sharp it needs to be the closer you are the sharper it needs to be okay so Nick allows you very helpfully to, to determine that distance now I usually have it 60 to 150 because I'm guessing uh, 60 centimeters to 150 centimeters that would be the distance that a judge would look at my image if it was lucky enough to get through um, to the final stages so I leave it set to that but if I want to print something for my lounge wall then I would set it for much further away 3 meters plus or 2 1.8 3 meters pretty important really important setting that then the paper type so Nick understand that depending on the type of paper it needs to be sharpened differently and this is very true very very true if you use a glossy paper it needs to be sharpened differently to if you use um, a fine art paper but helpfully Nick have built all that in lot so you can textured and fine art canvas plain matte luster I'm sharpening this for um, uh, a color print my paper of choice for color printing is permajet uh, gold silk and that is a luster paper and permajet will tell you what type of paper it is so that's set to luster and this printer resolution again you'll find this um, the printer manufacturer will supply this information to you and they'll tell you the native resolution of your printer so find out what that is and put that in and then you can adjust all the sharpening now let me tell you something I never do I just leave it completely as standard and I've found it works absolutely fine so we go okay Nick goes away and does its stuff you can see it's having a think and it comes back and there it is there's a sharpened image now I'm not sure on the resolution that you're going to see whether you'll notice the difference but if I switch it on and switch it off I certainly can I can certainly see that that image has been sharpened but the important thing is it's been sharpened the right amount for the size of paper I'm using the type of paper I'm using and the distance for which it's going to be viewed at that's really important so the final step is just to flatten it and then I would save this um, file save as and I'm not going to do it because it'll already be there um, it'll already be there as a print look but I would give it uh, the title so for every um, particular image I've got four versions of it so this is Gannets so it's Gannet, Gannet 1 is um, I think this one's Gannet 2 actually no it's Gannet 1 so you can see for Gannet 1 there's the, the Photoshop master version with all the layers there's the flattened version there's the competition version um, that's been sharpened 1600 by 1200 there's a competition version that's been sharpened to 2500 pixels a different type of different competition requirements and here's the print version and so for every image I've got on my folder there will be these four or five different versions of it um, all that remains to do then is to load that print version up into Lightroom and then you're into the uh, tutorial I recorded a little bit earlier, which is the Lightroom settings to use. Hope that's been useful. Okay, bye.